In the heart of Old Town in Albuquerque, just south of I-40 and east of Rio Grande Boulevard, is the Rattlesnake Museum. A unique and small museum tucked in the southeast corner of the plaza, it houses the largest collection of different species of live rattlesnakes in the world. Pulling from North, Central, and South America, this collection hosts more different species than the Bronx Zoo, the San Diego Zoo, and National Zoo all combined. Having appeared on 27 television shows on networks like the Disney and Discovery channels, and hosting nearly 300 field trips a year, this is undoubtedly a popular spot, but this is my first visit. And let me say right off the bat, I had no idea there were so many varieties of rattlesnakes, 31 in this museum alone. And from all the exhibits and artifacts here, even those of us with phobias of snakes and squirmy reptiles can still enjoy and get a better understanding and appreciation for these snakes. For one, while each of these rattlers is behind a protective glass, I learned that even in the wild, we are far more dangerous to these animals than they are to us. In fact, they will make every effort to avoid us. They're actually shy creatures. Often, snake bites occur when someone is trying to capture, kill, or handle the snake, and the bite is simply a defensive maneuver. And in the case of rattlesnakes, the rattle is a tool of communication. They use it as a warning sign to alert animals and people of their location. Despite the bad rap they get, they aren't aggressive and they really don't want to hurt us. In meeting with the founder and director of the museum, Bob, even more myths were dispelled. There are a lot of old wives tales and a lot of urban myths, probably more so than truths. Uh, things like uh, telling the age of a rattlesnake. You mm -hmm. cannot do that by counting rattle segments. Mm -hmm. uh, not even close. Uh, they get a new rattle segment every time they shed their skin. Yeah. Not once a year. And they do lose segments. They're made of uh, keratin. It gets brittle. Mm -hmm. Pieces break off. And uh, baby rattlesnakes are not more dangerous than adult rattlesnakes. Really? I oh. always thought that was true. Oh, oh. boy. So, I don't know who's passing that around, <laughs> but they, they've done a good job. Yeah, baby rattlesnakes have a, a very small amount of venom, very tiny fangs. They will bite and defend themselves mm -hmm. and inject venom, but so little that it's not particularly dangerous. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I learned something today. And on and on and on. And what do you think it is? Because there's this, like you said, there's this weird curiosity, fascination. What do you think it is about snakes that kind of create that, that feel for people around them? Yeah. Well, I think they're so different. Mm -hmm. um, the, the lack of arms and legs is a start. They don't have eyelids, so it always appears that they're staring. Uh, of course, they move in that undulating serpentine <laughs> fashion. And um, something about the difference uh, between mammals and these special reptiles uh, make them a, a, an, an attraction in themselves. Right. They're super distinct. I, I, that's what I right. think. Like there's nothing, like you said, serpentine. The word serpentine comes from the serpent. There's nothing like it. It stands on its own. So when people come here, what do you hope they get out of their experience when they come? Well, I, I hope that the people that, that have a fear of rattlesnakes um, start to get over that. These are shy animals. Right. They're not after people. We're not food for them. Uh, in the wild, they, uh, they tend to sit still and quiet. We probably pass by them most often. They protect our crops. Uh, they protect us from diseases that might be carried by rodents. And not, not to mention the venom being used for you know, different research and, and for things that help humans, right? Right, right. More and more we're learning that there could be components uh, within the venoms of different animals, including snakes, uh, that might be used in medicine. Um, the saliva of the Gila monster is already being used to treat diabetic patients, and very successfully. I certainly have a better understanding and appreciation of snakes than when I came through the door. Not to mention, I enjoyed the rare opportunity to stare down a snake face to face. They are just so cool to watch. So head on down to Old Town to meet them yourself.